Hello. Hello, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, I wanted to talk about voodoo, hoodoo, and the Orisha. Uh, getting down to the basic of the study of African spirituality. If you have, uh, are you, if you're trying to evolve out of religion, uh, and you're trying to figure out what you should study, which is what, uh, concerning voodoo, hoodoo, or, uh, the Orisha, Santeria, what's the difference in all of it, and, 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 and where to go, you know, where you need to go to start, uh, implementing it in your everyday life. And what's the difference in it? Uh, you know, some of you uh, sometimes when you become awake, you become so overwhelmed about which direction you, you need to go into spiritually to uh, benefit, you know, to, to receive your spiritual growth. And I understand that. So you're just trying to find out where do I go if I really want to start implementing the truth of spirituality in my life? What is hoodoo? What is voodoo? Uh, you know, some of you uh, think you get overwhelmed by the study. I'm just trying to find out where you need to go. So I'm just going to tell you my take on it to simplify it for you, to make it easy. Because I know for some of you, it could be overwhelming. Uh, some of you are new to this, uh, you know, and you're growing, trying to get comfortable in your spiritual practice. Uh, you're learning more about the ancestors, and you do want to honor your ancestors, and you do want to follow the spiritual practice of your ancestors, and you're just trying to find out uh, uh, which direction should you go. Uh, the first direction is honoring the ancestors, okay? Especially in, especially in African spirituality, this is so imperative because most of our ancestors were deities. So just by beginning this practice, uh, you op you open up so many uh, parts of your DNA. You're taking yourself to a higher frequency. Okay, so um, if you are are indigenous Aboriginal person like me, and you begin to honor your ancestors, you're gonna find out that you're gonna be able to connect with many spiritual practices as an African uh, or Aboriginal indigenous person you'll be able to work with, um, you know, with indigenous uh, spiritual practices um, a lot better. Some people call it hoodoo. Some people call it voodoo. Some people call it centuria. Uh, it's got so many different names. I don't like to get into these labels, but these are spiritual practices of nature. And that's, you know, religion. If you pay attention to religion, religion... Uh, uh, they do not have um, spiritual practices that, that venerates nature. They really don't. And in uh, all these indigenous, most of these indigenous cultures, their spiritual practices is honoring nature. So religion kind of moved away from nature because nature is God. So that's what this is all about, getting back in to the uh, concept that God is everywhere, God is in nature, okay? That is how uh, most of these spiritual practice, our ancestors practice, that's how they worked. So the first thing you want to do, which is natural, which is customary in indigenous culture, is to honor the ancestors. The more you do that, the more you do that, you'll find out which direction you need to go into spiritually, whether you want to uh, work with voodoo, hoodoo, uh, some of the most uh, other traditional uh, African spirituality, such as Ifa, uh, some of the other ones. It's, it's so many other ones, but they have some of the same paradigm. Uh, and so they all begin, most of them begin with the ancestors. That's the first thing. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about hoodoo and voodoo. Uh, hoodoo is, it, it, it is a... Com a, a, compila a compilation of Wicca, folk magic, uh, magic that our ancestors brought over here from where they came from, uh, magic that was out, where, you know, a spiritual practice they were already practicing here as Aboriginal people. Uh, they were already practicing hoodoo. And I, you know, I, I still remember some of the things my grandmother talked to me about 
such as uh, her mother taught her how to split storms. This was a part of their, um, you know, she said she used to split storms for her mom. And she was telling me how she split storms. And my uh, great-grandmother was a Blackfoot uh, Aboriginal Washita, uh Native American Aboriginal person. So uh, she she didn't go to church. She never had a picture of Jesus in her in her house. She didn't she didn't attend church. So and we call her Big Mama. She was very set in her ways and at, for good reason. She would she did strange things too. She would keep water around her house. Uh, I never knew why. And when I asked her, she would just smile. So she was keeping some of the old ways too. Um, I remember my mom, one of my mom, my mom's fiance. He was teaching me how to lock a dog bowels. That's some of the ways of our ancestors. And you kind of, uh, when you're in the presence of a dog and you don't want him to, uh, uh, you don't want him to use the bathroom in your yard, you don't want him to poop in your yard, then you and another person just lock your fingers together real tight and look at that dog, he will not be able to poop in the yard. That's the other thing that our ancestors uh, used to practice. So I don't know if it's hoodoo or whatever, but I, I picked up a little of that as a child uh, when older people would talk, I would talk to them or I, they would show me different things. So that, them them some of the things that I picked up from them. So that I would like to say that's part of hoodoo. Uh, if we look and take a look, talk, let's take a closer look. You know, hoodoo, they do, they venerate, they do keep some of the things in the Bible. And I'm going to get, let me, let's talk about that for a minute. They keep some of the things in the Bible because the Bible has a, a certain universal spiritual truth in it. Okay, there's a lot of spiritual universal truth. We have to remember the Bible was stolen, uh, stolen from our ancient ancestors, which were uh, the Sibyls. You can talk, you could, you know, you, I did a book review on that, uh, which it was based on a, a, a money art. You know, matriarchal, um, it was based on a matriarchal system. And these women were prophetess. That's, you know, just like the Vatican uh, function of the day, so did these sibyls, these goddesses. They were the, the high priestess, the empresses, you know, the goddesses that, that bought forth the prophecies. Okay? So uh, the Bible's construct taken a lot from them, and then a lot of the Bible has been misconstrued as well. And taken out of context, uh, a lot of the Bible ha uh, it comes from Kemet as well. Okay, Hero, Aset, Isis. Okay, so you have to do your research into that when you go in to do more re historical research on yourself. Okay, but I talked about that in one of my book reviews. You can go check that out on YouTube. I did a, 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 a book uh I did a book review, uh, book review on the civil. So that's interesting. If you want to know more about that, um, go check out my YouTube channel. But who do, uh, they use a lot of psalms in there. Psalms are nothing but like poems. And poems are, can be used as spells. Okay? So psalms has a, a lot of psychic energy that you can use in some of your spiritual work. I hate to use spell because that's that you know that that frightens people. I'm gonna use the words prayers, candle prayers. They really help. Our ancestors use that. Okay. And so uh yeah who do do use do you, uh use some of the Bible to do and they use some of the universal concepts. So yeah you can use this too if you're transitioning and evolving uh that is uh, a, a good area to go in. Okay, now I'm going to talk about voodoo and other African spiritual practices. <clears throat> As you can tell, uh, uh, if you did some uh, history on voodoo, if you did any research on voodoo, then you know that it, it was able to hide um, under Catholicism. Okay? And uh, it, this is so interesting because when one, I did a thesis on this, when one look takes a closer look at Catholicism, you have to ask yourself, is Catholicism based on uh, Vudun? Because Vudun is a 100,000-year-old uh, ancestral practice, okay? We're talking about ancestors. So uh, when I talk about Vudun, Orisha is a little different, but almost the same. They've been, it's, it's big on uh, 
on honoring uh, ancestors, but more so on honoring the primordial beings that created that that uh, created nature. Okay, so uh, but we're gonna talk about voodoo for now. Then we're gonna go into that. But uh, voodoo was able to hide under Catholicism. And by looking at some of the saints, they were able to identify with some of the ancestral deities. And so uh, they were able to, to uh, you know, keep their ancestral practices. Again, now you see hoodoo uh, use some of the same practices as voodoo as well. Some of he, uh, hoodoo, uh, you know, spiritual practice mirror voodoo. Okay. So with the closer that you look at this, you'll start seeing the similarities. So it'll make it easier for you to understand uh, the concept, the spiritual concepts of our ancestors. But I'm going to be giving you some book references uh, to help you as well. Okay, so in this book, um, the book, of what is called the Book of Voodoo Charms and Rituals to Empower Your Life by Leah Gordon. This is a really good book. Let me show it to you. Okay, uh, this book, um, it is really good because it tells you the saints as well as the, uh, the African deities that the saints represent. So that's why I like this book. So you'll start seeing, it's the same thing, people. That's why I'm trying to tell you, it's the same thing. You know, some people think they're going outside the, the Catholicism. And so when I look at Catholicism and I think, oh, it's got to be based on uh, Voodoo because Voodoo is older, older than Catholicism. The closer that you look at uh, Catholicism, you see it's, it's, a, it's another mimic, okay? And the closer that our ancestors start looking at the Bible and some of the stories in them, they knew that it was a mimic of, of, of their ancestors. So they were able to use it. Use that psychic energy of their ancestors in that Bible to be able to uh, do some of the spiritual work that they're doing. So don't don't get so caught up um, in you know in trying to separate everything. I say look at the similarities in everything. Stop looking. You we've been taught to look at things and, and separate them. Don't so much look at that. Look at the similarities in them. Okay, and that's going to help you function better and know where you need to go to begin your spiritual growth. Okay, so uh, in this book, uh, for I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna give you an example of Papa Lick because it tells you who it is. It says the colors. It gives you the color of the the uh, the deity, and it tells you Papa Lick is red or white. The symbols are the cross, the keys, the walking stick, or the crutches. The offerings he like is grilled chicken, sweet potatoes, plantains, bones, small bag containing clearing tobacco, uh, pipe, a pipe hung in a tree or a doorway. Uh, his favorite tree is the calabash. And his Catholic counterpart is St. Peter, St. Anthony, St. Lazarus. Okay, so they, they letting you know what's the Catholic counterpart to uh, Papa Legba. Uh, if any of you watch Fences, uh, they mentioned Papa Legba in there, but as St. Peter, remember he blowed that trumpet to make sure his brother made it into heaven? That was a ritual right there. That was a, a, a Elegba ritual, one of our ancestors. That's one way how they hid, uh, hid their spiritual practices. So you see that in the movie Fences, too, if you have watched the movie Fences. I caught that when I was watching that movie. I look at a lot of symbolism now, uh, now that I'm more spiritual and I work more with the ancestors and some of their deities. I see a lot of symbolism in life now. Uh, and that's how, that's mostly how you're going to receive your, your spiritual messages through your, is through your life, through your everyday life and through nature and the people you come in contact with. Okay, so that, uh, so you know that Papa Legba, Legba counterparts is St. Peter, St. Anthony, and St. Lazarus. And you see, in hoodoo, they use some of these same saints. Okay? Mama Bridget, you'll see some of that being used. And some of them use uh, Native American deities as well in hoodoo. 
Hoodoo is just like a mixture of indigenous and spiritual practices. Folk magic. That's what hoodoo is. Okay? Anything, you can, uh, people think, oh, you can do, um, uh, you know, you can do bad stuff with this. You can do bad stuff in Christianity, too. Every time you give communion, you get up there and give communion, give, do communion, you are particip participating in a black magic ritual unknowingly. You are drinking blood. You eating bread, eating flesh. This is what you're saying. That's what you're doing in there. You're unconsciously doing. So please don't talk. Don't get on here talking about, oh, you can use that's black magic and all that. No, you're practicing black magic in church. Uh, some of you Christians, uh, you, you're not even looking at the concept of what you're doing. And I don't do any of that in any of my rituals with my ancestors. I don't pretend like I'm drinking the blood, drinking their blood. I don't pretend like I'm eating the flesh. They already died for me and gave their flesh, you know, and all that for me. So why would I, you know, disgrace them with that? You know, so, you know, start thinking. Put on your spiritual thinking caps. That's the only thing I can tell some of you, Okay. But uh, that is, I'm sorry, I got off talking, but I just, you know, I knew that, you know, some of these Christians or somebody that's not spiritually enlightened, they'll, they'll take this and be like, oh, that's dark magic or whatever. But you're practicing dark magic even at church when you sit up there and you shout and all that and then you leave outside and then you're talking all negative about the members. And that's black magic because your words are things and, that, you know, you're you're. You're uh you're participating in the psychic attack every time you do that. Okay, so uh when you if you're truly spiritual, you'll know that. So you know you can e you can either uh invoke happiness in your life or you can invoke you know sadness in your life by the power of your words and your thoughts. So as you become spiritual spiritual, you are aware of that. You become more aware. So that's uh that's Papa Legba Saint right there. Uh, I don't I don't know more about the Marasa. They talk about the Marasa in this book too, and the saint for the Marasa is the Saint Cosmos and the Saint D Damien. Okay, so this is a good book to have. You see the similarities in here. They have songs in this book. They have rituals in this book. Uh, this is a really good book. So, uh, if you're trying to do some comparison and you're doing some work with Voodoo and you want to use some of the saints, this is a good book. It has some rituals and stuff in there, too. Okay, I haven't tried any of the rituals, but uh, my research is, was to do more with the saints and know more about them. Uh, the, the seagulls are in here, too. There are seagulls in here, too. So, this is a very thorough book. Uh, it, it may be small, but it's, it's, it's packed full of information. It even have the uh, the charts, uh, the symbols in here. Uh, you know, this is like, if I can get it closer for you. Okay, they have the symbol. You know, this is a very thorough book. So, uh, if you're interested in knowing more about how, uh, how to compare some of the saints to the voodoo deities and, and some rituals, the uh, voodoo... It's Voodoo Charms and Rituals to Empower Your Life. Leah Gordon. Very good book. Uh, if you're interested in the candles, this is an old book. It's really, really old. There's some good information in there if you're interested in Voodoo. Uh, I, I refer to it all the time. I love working with candles, prayer candles. That's my thing. This is a really good uh, Voodoo Candle Magic. And this is a really good book. Uh, it used a lot of uh, verses out the Bible. And there's another book um, called by Anna Rivas. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. She has a book, too, that used a lot of the Psalms for prayer work, candle work. And so does Raymond Buckland. Uh, he, uh, his book is excellent. He has an excellent uh, candle book that used some of the Psalms in the, uh, used the Psalms in his candle work. And that's Raymond Buckland. So I, he... You know, I like some of his stuff, too. Okay. Um, in here, we're going to talk about Voodoo. And I'm going to talk about uh, Azurly, uh I mean, Voodoo and Orisha. I'm getting off track. I'm going to talk about Voodoo and the Orisha. Okay. Voodoo and uh, the Orisha, they simmer, they're very, very similar. Uh, I would like to say almost one and the same. The only difference I see... 
uh, to me, uh, and, and, and it's probably one, it's probably one of the same. It's just the way my brain registered it. Um, uh, is that voodoo is more, uh, ancestral. It start, it, it, it's more ancestral. Okay. That's what I see with voodoo. That it's more ancestors. It's, it started off, uh, being, uh, real true deities, uh, uh, of our ancestors, uh, and then you'll see too where uh, is uh, some of the deities. Papa Legba is in all of uh, in both of them. You see Ishu, uh, Elegba uh, being evoked, even in Vadum and and Orisha as you know is the uh, door opener, the way opener. You you calling him first. He's the gatekeeper. You calling him first before you work with any deity in Vadum and Orisha. So you'll see that as well. You'll see the uh, the similarities as well. You'll see uh, also that um, I like this. Uh, for instance, in in Orisha, uh, Shango was a real individual. He was a real person that actually lived. So now he is deified as in Orisha. Okay. So a lot of our ancestors were uh, real people now venerating at, at uh, venerated as as deities and to help us uh in the physical realm so that's the difference you know uh in those two um i would like to say the voodoo I, when i first started working with this i just erected their zuli frida and the legba altar uh with this but with the orisha i began to pray uh, more with them with the ancestors. This is a really good book uh, if you're trying to get to know more about the African ancestors or trying to uh, learn more how to practice uh, more uh, like your ancestors, your indigenous ancestors. This is a really good book. Uh, it has some really good prayers in here. They call them Adoras. But uh, it has some really good uh, prayers in here for the ancestors to help you get in contact with your higher self. Um, I use some of the uh, the rituals in here, especially for the Eritreans when I'm pouring my libations and honoring nature uh, because uh, the Eritreans are part of nature, okay? So you're going to have to understand that too. When I first started working with this energy, I saw a shift and a change in my life too. So make sure you're honoring nature and honoring the uh, Eritreans. Okay, um, as well, at some point you'll get in, you'll, you'll feel a need to honor them. Okay, because they're, they're pre-religion. Okay, so at some point you'll want to uh, honor, honor their reaches because that's nature. Okay, so um, that's the difference in, in these books, you know, that's the difference in voodoo and hoodoo. Okay, um. So don't get so tired tied up in in the division that you don't see the similarities. Make sure you study the similarities because the more comfortable you're going to become uh, practicing um, your spiritual your spirituality. Okay, Jambalaya, I love this book. Her name is uh, Louisa Tisa Hopatish. I may be pronouncing it wrong because I'm horrible at um, pronouncing things. But this book is really good. Uh, what I like about this book is she sets up. She'll tell you. She talk. Uh, she'll tell you how to set up uh, altars in here. She gives specific um, instructions on how to set up your altar, uh, how to form a spiritual root. Um, you know, she got some rituals and stuff in here. Uh, in the book, Jambalaya, she has some rituals in the book. Uh, it's not so much as, you know, some be, many people get caught up in organized religion, you know. Uh, but she really goes into uh, honoring her ancestors in this book, okay. That's the most important thing. You're going to see that everywhere you go in Ifa. You're going to see that in Vudun. Before you can move on to any of those, you know, Make sure you are honoring your ancestors, okay? Because when you do that, 
you are opening up those ancestors as well that may have uh, practiced that spiritual practices. You want to honor them first so you can go on to, to honor uh, the Orisha, to honor some of the Voodoo deities. You want to honor your, those ancestors first so you can open up that dialogue. So don't, you know, don't try to work with uh, other deities before you have established uh, a relationship with your ancestors and you have been, you know, if you've been working with angels, that's great. But, you know, your next thing is to do some work on your DNA. Uh, and in our DNA is a lot of spiritual knowledge. And our ancestors had a lot of spiritual knowledge. So the first thing you want to do is unlock that. You know, I hope that makes sense to you. But um, this book, Jambalaya, Jambalaya, has herbs and colors for bath. Uh, she shows you how to set up an altar. Uh, she talks a little bit, a, a little bit about candle spiritual, you know, candle spiritual practices. You know, working with candles. I, I I don't like to say spell work. It's just I don't like saying that. You know, people just didn't gave it such a bad term. But um. She, you know, she talks about all that in there. I wish she, you know, what I did like about the book, she talked a lot about herself. And uh, I was so much more interested in the rituals and stuff. But she do talk about the rituals and she do talk about the baths. And she has some videos on YouTube if you're interested in knowing more about uh, the author. You know, uh, she's very, very wise elder. So, uh, her name is, uh, Lu Luisa Tease. Very, very, uh, smart lady. Uh, I like her. She's a goddess. So, uh, if you're interested in more, and, 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 and she, uh, she is, you know, she's from New Orleans, and, uh, she practiced, uh, Oshan Lukumbi, uh, uh, spiritual practice, and again, uh, the Orisha also, you know, that Santeria was also able to have had up on the Catholicism. Again, you see what I'm saying? Santeria also was able to have had up on the Catholicism. So, uh, when you look at Catholicism, again, when one look at Catholicism, they think calling on the saints is, uh, is any different from calling on the Orishas or anything else. Uh, I will tell you it's the same thing. Whether they're they're saying they're praying to this saint, or whether they're saying they're praying to the Orisha, because uh, the Orisha and the Vudun is older than Catholicism. So what do you think? It's the same thing. It's the same thing, you know. So uh, now whether was was uh, the, the question is to ask: Is Catholicism aware that they? Uh, their religion is plagiarized. That's the question to ask. They, these are questions you should ask yourself. You know, and we know that subcultures learn from the original culture. And Catholicism, it, it is, it, it was, you know, it's based on indigenous spiritual practice that's been modified by colonizers. Okay, so understand, uh, understand uh, religion. And so you can better understand, you know, these spiritual practices. Look at uh, the similarities more than you're looking at uh, the differences in them. Stop trying to break them down and, and separate them. Because the more you do some comparison in them, you're going to see that, dang, they, they like the same. Basically, you know, you got Lacombo, you got... Paolo, uh, the other Paolo Megumbe, I, I might be pronouncing that wrong. You got Santeria, you got Voodoo, and then when you start to look at them, you'll see the similarities in them. There's not much difference, it's just the name and how the subculture has modified it. That's what you got now, modification. When you start talk, uh, talking uh, separation, you're talking about modification, Okay. And I, I don't see anything wrong with modification if that works for you. But uh, to me, when we start looking at modification, we start looking at separation. And that, you know, that, you know, it, to me, that brings on confusion. You know, separation. Stick to the similarities. And, and um, it'll be easy for you to find out what is going to work for you. And start, and, and instead of trying to see the difference in them, 
see the similarities in them so you can feel comfortable with working in them because you'll see all the similarities i hope this video helped you and i thank you for watching uh light and love may the ancestors be with you